Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to understand the next important concept in statistics and Six Sigma, that is data transformation. In this video, I am going to explain what is meant by data transformation, why is the need for data transformation, can you do the analysis for non-normal data without data transformation, what are the different types of data transformation and at the end, we are also going to understand one of the data transformation that is box cost transformation with the help of practical example in Minitab. So let's begin. Let's understand this very important topic with the first question. What is data transformation? Data transformation is the process of changing the format, structure or values of data. And when you are talking about the data transformation, it is a transformation that is used to transform non-normal data to normal data. This transformation is done by using the many functions such as square root, logarithm, power, reciprocal or arc sign and there are many multiple options are there. We can use the option of calculator in Minitab to calculate this transformation. And this transformed data then we are going to use for analysis. After understanding what is the data transformation, the next question that is coming in our mind is why is the need for data transformation? And here is the answer for that. Data transformation is needed because one of the most common assumption for statistical analysis is the normality of the data. What is meaning of that? Nearly all parametric analysis requiring this assumption in one way or another. That means your data must be normally distributed. For example, if you take the assumption of normality for a regression is that the regression's error is normally distributed. Not that all the variables in analysis are normal. That means when we are doing the regression analysis, the basic assumption was the residuals are normally distributed. And that's why in some cases we require that data need to be transformed to the normal data. The second one, why we are doing the transformation? Because when we are doing the transformation, it makes interpretation of the data much easier. And it also makes the appearance of the graphs easier to understand. Now we can ask this question. Is your data normal? If your data is normal, then no need to transform the data to meet the assumptions of normality. But if your data is non-normal, then we need to transform the data to meet the assumptions of normality. Not in all the cases, data transformation is required. I will go into the detail of it when we require the data transformation, what are the different options later. But just understand, when your data is not normal, then we can use the data transformation to transform non-normal data to the normal data. Let's take one practical example to understand why there is a need for data transformation. Just look at this example. This is a scatter plot for population versus area. A scatter plot in which the areas of the independent states and dependent territories in the world are plotted on the vertical axis. If you look at this scatter plot, no conclusion can be drawn from this graph. But if we transform that data by using the logarithmic functions, we can see the graph on the right side. In the right plot, both the area and population data have been transformed using the logarithmic function. Now, if you look at the scatter plot, it's very easy to interpret. Here, we can say that as there is an increase in the area, also there is an increase in the population. So that means data transformation is always very much necessary for easy interpretation of the data or to understand the relationship between different variables. So up to this point, we have understood that what is meant by the data transformation and why is the need for data transformation? Now the next question that is might be coming in your mind that is it always necessary to transform the non-normal data to the normal data or can I do the analysis for non-normal data without transformation? The answer is yes, of course. We can also do the analysis of the data without data transformation. And what are that options? There are two options. The first sample size for the averages of the data points must be large enough it should be more than or equal to 30. And why it is so? Because we can use the center limit theorem in this case. This is because center limit theorem says that the averages of the data points are always normally distributed even though the data is drawn from any other distributions. That means whether the data is following the normal distribution or following the non-normal distribution. For that purpose, we should have the sample size 
at least 30 or more than 30. And the second option, we can use the options for analysis for the non-normal distributions or we can use the non-parametric test for analysis. To identify which distribution is best fitted for your data, we can also use the individual distribution identification. I had already made the videos on these two important topics, central limit theorem and individual distribution identification. If you want to understand them in detail, you can also visit these videos. Or there is also the third option and that is data transformation. That means we can transform our data by applying a function to make our data fit to a normal distribution. So up to this point, you might have the complete clarity about what is meant by the data transformation. Now the next question, what are the different types of data transformation are available and which is the most suited for you? So here we are going to understand two types of transformations. One is box cost transformation and the second one is Johnson transformation. The box cost transformation is only available for the data that are positive. That means we cannot use the box cost transformation for negative values. It is very easy to understand, but it provides a very limited transformation options. Whereas if you go for the Johnson transformation, this is available for any data values, including negative. This is complicated to understand. This is very powerful for determining an appropriate transformation and only use the Johnson transformation when box cost algorithm does not determine appropriate transformation because this is little bit complicated to understand. These are the two important transformations that we can use for the data transformation. Now let's go into the detail for box cost transformation. As we had already seen, the box cost transformation is used when the process data is not normally distributed and the data is not collected in subgroup. If the data is collected in subgroup, then we can use the central limit theorem. Residuals are not normally distributed and if they don't have the constant variance, in that case also, we need to use the box cost transformation. We can use the box cost transformation when all values must be greater than zero. That means there is no negative value in our data set and the entire data must be for the continuous variables. Now let's understand the detailed procedure to perform this box cost transformation with the help of practical example in Minitab. To perform the box cost transformation, we need to follow the following procedure. That means we need to go to the Minitab, Stat, Control Chart and then Box Cost Transformation. I am also going to demonstrate this detailed procedure with the help of data for one of the example later. Minitab determines an optimal power transformation when we are using the box cost transformation. This box cost transformation is very easy to understand which I already explained to you but it is limited and often does not determine a suitable transformation. It is only available for the data that are positive. We are going to perform this box cost transformation on our response data when the residuals are not normally distributed or do not have the constant variance. When we use the box cost transformation, then Minitam transforms the response data and uses this data for the analysis. And that data can be used for easy interpretation of the results or to identify the relationship between multiple variables. In regression analysis, under most condition, it is not necessary to correct the non-normality unless the data are highly skewed. When we are performing the box cost transformation, we can select the lambda value that Minitab uses to transform the data. When we are doing no transformation, that means in that case, we are using the original response data. And when we are using the optimal lambda value, then in that case, we are selecting the lambda value which should produce the best fitting transformation. By default, Minitab rounds the optimal lambda to 0.5 or the nearest integer. For example, Minitab rounds lambda to minus 1, minus 0 0.5, 0, 1, 1.5, 2. So that is an increment of 0.5. When lambda is equal to 0, then we are performing the transformation function as natural log. That means we use the natural log of your data. When lambda is equal to 0.5, then we are performing the square root function. That means we use the square root of your data. There is also an option to use a specified value of lambda. We can also select any other value of lambda for the different transformations. The common transformations are like lambda is equal to 2, which is indicating the square of the data, inverse square root, that means lambda is equal to minus 0.5, and inverse, in that case, lambda is equal to minus 1. Usually, while performing the box cost transformation, 
we should not have the value for lambda outside of the range of minus 5 and 5. These are the common box cost transformations that we can use. When the lambda value is minus 3, then the transform data will be 1 upon y cube. When our lambda value is equal to minus 2, then the transform data value will be 1 upon y square. When the lambda value is equal to minus 1, then the transform data will be 1 upon y, that is the inverse or reciprocal of the data. When the lambda value is minus 0.5, then the transform data will be 1 upon square root of y. When the lambda value is equal to 0, then we are using the logarithmic function, log of y. When lambda is equal to 0.5, then we will be having the transform data function which is equal to square root of y. When lambda is equal to 1, then we are using the original data for analysis. That means when the value for lambda is equal to 1, we are not using any data transformations. When the lambda is equal to 2, then we are having the transform data function as a square of the data. And when lambda is equal to 3, we will be having the transform data as a function of cube of the respective data points. These are some of the common values of lambda that can use for the box cost transformation. Now let's understand this box cost transformation with the help of one practical example. A textile manufacturer developed a solar energy system to preheat feed water for a boiler that is a part of the power system for the manufacturing process. A technician monitors the amount of energy that is used each hour to make sure that the preheat process is stable. The technician then conducts a normality test on the data and finds that the data do not follow a normal distribution. The technician then conducts a box cost transformation to determine whether it is appropriate for the transformation or not. This is the data collected by a technician for the amount of energy consumed. Now let's first see whether it is following the normal distribution or not. To check whether it is following the normal distribution or not, we can perform the normality test. For that purpose, go to the stat basic statistics and then we can select the option for normality test. In normality test we can select the variable as energy and then click OK. After performing the normality test we can say that Anderson Darling p-value for the test is less than 0 0.05. So we can say that data is not following the normal distribution. Once we confirm that the data is not following the normal distribution now let's transform this data to the normal distribution by using box cost transformation. To perform the box cost transformation, we can follow the procedure. Go to the stat, control chart and then use the option of box cost transformation. We can also see what is a message coming there. Transform your data to fit a normal distribution. Can be used only on non-normal data that do not contain negative numbers or zeros. Our data is meeting that requirement so we can select this option. Here we can see there are multiple options are available in drop down. The first one is all observations for a chart are in one column or observation for a subgroup are in one row of columns. Here we need to select the first option. All observation for a chart are in one column. In second box, select the variable as energy. Put the subgroup size as one. If we click on options, we can see there are two options are available. The first one is for optimal or rounded value of lambda or we can also enter any value of lambda between minus 5 and 5. So let's keep the default selection of optimal or rounded value of lambda and we can also store the transform data in one of the column. Let's say the name of the column is transform and then click OK. Click OK. We are getting the transform data by using the box cost transformation. This is a box cost plot of energy. We can also see the transform data into the column name transform. Now let's understand the interpretation of results in detail. This is a box cost plot that we have got at the result of performing box cost transformation in our example. For the box cost transformation, a lambda value of 1 is equivalent to using the original data. That means we are not perform any data transformation on the original data. Therefore. If the confidence interval for the optimal lambda includes 1, then no transformation is necessary. In this example, the 95% confidence interval for lambda, which includes minus 2.87 as a lower confidence level and 0.66 as upper confidence level, does not include 1. So, a transformation is appropriate. 
The estimate value of the optimal lambda is minus 1.03 that we can see into the box cost plot. Because the rounded value for the lambda is minus 1 is within the confidence interval, the technician should transform the data using lambda is equal to minus 1. And we had already seen when you are using the lambda is equal to minus 1, that means we are taking the reciprocal of it. A transformation that uses lambda is equal to minus 1 corresponds to inverse transformation. That means the transform value is equal to 1 upon original value. In this example, the 95% confidence interval for lambda, which includes minus 2.87 as a lower confidence level and 0.66 as a upper confidence level does not include 1. So we can say that the transformation is appropriate. This is all about data transformation and one of the type of data transformation that is box cost transformation with the help of practical example in Minita. Now, at the end of this video, if you found this information useful, then please do not forget to like and comment. If you want to get the such valuable information in future as well, then please do not forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get all notifications. Finally, if you want to learn Lean Six Sigma most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijaysabe.co slash join. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.